Hello, this is a brief overview on some topics over the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system, including the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. The somatic nervous system is the voluntary nervous system, and in this video we're going to be focusing more on the motor or efferent fibers. Most of the motor fibers will begin in the cerebral cortex and descend into the medulla oblongata. It is here that it will decussate or cross over to the contralateral side. Then it will travel down the spinal cord and synapse at the ventral horn. The next neuron will travel out and synapse at a muscle. This is called a neuromuscular junction. In this example, the neuron that came from the cerebral cortex is considered an upper motor neuron. The neuron that came out from the ventral horn is considered a lower motor neuron. Once again in this example, decussation occurred at the medulla oblongata pyramids. The excitatory neurotransmitter found between the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron is called glutamate. The neurotransmitter released from the lower motor neuron is called acetylcholine. The target receptor found at the neuromuscular junction is a nicotinic cholinergic receptor. Now we're moving to the autonomic or involuntary nervous system. In the sympathetic nervous system, you will find short preganglionic fibers and long postganglionic fibers. In the parasympathetic nervous system, you're going to find long preganglionic fibers and short postganglionic fibers. These fibers are described as either being before or after the ganglion found in the autonomic nervous systems. The neurotransmitter released from the preganglionic fibers is acetylcholine, and the target receptor of the preganglionic fibers is a nicotinic cholinergic receptor. The neurotransmitter released at the postganglionic fibers in the parasympathetic nervous system is acetylcholine. The target receptor of the postganglionic fiber in the parasympathetic nervous system is a muscarinic cholinergic receptor. The neurotransmitter released at the postganglionic fiber of the sympathetic nervous system is norepinephrine. The target receptors of most postganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system are adrenergic receptors. The adrenergic receptors discussed in this video will be alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. An interesting aspect of the sympathetic nervous system is the track that goes to the sweat glands. As you can see here is the postganglionic fibers release acetylcholine. The target receptor of these postganglionic fibers is going to be a muscarinic receptor. Another interesting path of the sympathetic nervous system is a long preganglionic fiber going to the adrenal gland. The pheochromocytes of this area will secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine directly into the blood. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are now considered hormones in this instance and circulate throughout the body. The functions of these systems revolves around the sympathetic nervous system being more involved with fight or flight situations and the parasympathetic nervous system being more involved with the rest and digest functions of the body. The parasympathetic nervous system will stimulate a muscarinic cholinergic receptor at the end target. Due to this receptor being a metabotropic receptor, the effect could be either excitatory or inhibitory. For example, the parasympathetic nervous system will decrease heart rate while it will increase digestion. In the sympathetic nervous system, most of the pathways will end at an adrenergic receptor. If alpha-1 receptors are stimulated, it will cause vasoconstriction. If alpha-2 receptors are stimulated, it will cause an inhibitory effect of the GI tract. It also can cause vasodilation. Activated beta-1 receptors will promote an increase in strength of muscular contraction at the heart and also an increase in heart rate. Activated beta-2 receptors promote smooth muscle relaxation in the respiratory tract and also in the uterus. It should be noted that when epinephrine and norepinephrine are released in the blood, they will enhance the sympathetic nervous system by stimulating the adrenergic receptors. And lastly, on the sympathetic nervous system track that goes to the sweat glands, acetylcholine will be released and stimulate the muscarinic cholinergic receptors to promote sweating. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this helps you.